25 points up, it looked like you're in complete control and suddenly 10 goals later you're completely out of it. What, what did you say? Oh, just lost contests. You know, there, there's stages where, you know, I think we went down 17 contested ball. I think after Grimes he went off, it was minus 25 after... After that loss, we had to shuffle a few magnets. It just didn't quite work for us. And, you know, the last quarter, they transitioned from the back half at 44%. So our backs are trying to, you know, defend one-on-one where they've got electric ball movement. So that was the game in a nutshell, that, that second half. Uh, sorry, the um, the last quarter. You can you can lose contests, but your pressure's got to be high. And our pressure was 1.67. So if you lose both of those, you're always going to be in a bit of trouble. How frustrating is that a week after what you produced? Well, it is frustrating, but for three quarters, it was pretty bloody good so you know we can the disappointment of the last quarter will probably be the overriding thing to come out of the game but for three quarters we were very competitive against a pretty good side so um you know we've got some things that we can we can work on um but there's uh some certainly some things that we did pretty well today as well still a run you mentioned before how how bad does that hamstring look yeah not too sure it's obviously a hamstring and uh, now it's disappointing. So, looking to miss some time. What that is, we're not too sure. But once we get some um, some scans and the medical advice, we'll be uh, putting it out. Did you feel there was a sense of ill discipline as well? I mean, there was an issue with Marlon giving away that fifty. Yeah, it's it's disappointing, and the cheapness of some of the free kicks, like just you know discipline and and just too high, and the stoppage free kicks hurt us once again. And We've got to get better. You know, we've spoken about that all year about trying to eradicate that from our game, but it creeps in at, at critical stages and it's really, really costly. Like, you, you can't defend from a free kick, you can't put pressure on, they get a free disposal. So, um, you know, we've got to get better on that front. I mean, what, what can you do in that area? You say you've, you've brought it up and you've talked about eradicating it and then it keeps creeping in. What, what can you do next to try and... Well, at the end of the day, it's, you know, I can sit there and talk about it as much as you want, but the players have got to sit there and be accountable for their actions like everyone else is. So we've got to get better on that. You know, there's some that we, you know, 50-50s, but there's others where it's just, you know, poor technique or we just give away a down the field free kick or the ill discipline one like the Marlon one, which is disappointing. The guy's having a shot from 50, all of a sudden he's going from the goal square. So um, that hurts. Braxton King, obviously that last term was ridiculous. Is there anything you can you can do to stop it? How many things do you try and how frustrating is it to watch a, almost a single player virtually rip the result out of your hands? Oh, I wasn't. Look, Max was on the benefit of, of some work. Like I said, when you transition at 44% from the back half, the, the ball's coming in you know, with, without pressure. So, you know, you can be Alex Rance, Stephen Silvani and all those guys. You're not going to have any chance. You know, we've, we've got some players trying to do as best they can, but when they've got a clear, clear leading lane and the disposal's nice and clean, you know, you and me could mark that ball and get that kick. Don't get me wrong, he's a special player. Um, but just his finishing was, was elite also. So, um, you know, it's easy to still, sort of sit there and look at the outcome, but the fact of the matter is there's, there's bigger fit, uh, issues of field for us at that stage. I think Grimes had had him for most of the, most of the game to that point. Like, is it more to do, like, he wouldn't have been able to stop him either with, with the supply that was coming in, or is it... Sort of that, yeah, that I think so. Well, what, what Gresham sort of started to come in the game as well, and we just got overrun. You know, we, we had a, a setup that we sort of liked, and then, you know, had to move broad and to play deeper, and Brody was really good up the field. But, um, you know, unfortunately, we just couldn't get it done. So, you know, their, their forwards, I think, were very good. They moved the ball really well that, that second half, and, you know, probably the last quarter and a half, really. Um, what they do very well is they win contests, and as soon as they get a sniff, they're gone. Um, they did that very well today and you know, they've got to look at the way they play the game. When they get the game on their terms in that contest, they're, they're really, really hard to stop. So all credit to them. Where do they sit? Because it's, it's interesting because probably a lot of people externally wrote them off after last year and thought, you know, they're not a, they're not a contender anymore. But they're 2-1 and one now and from what you've played, where, where do you think they sit? Yeah, and the competition's even. Like the, the fact of the matter is you're going you're to come up against some sides that are travelling really well and there's other sides that aren't travelling very well at the, you know, certain stages. So... Um, it, it's too early to predict. They're a good side. When they're playing their very best footy, the Saints, as we know, they're a really capable, capable side and capable side of contending, as are probably 15 to 16 other sides, um, you know, us included. But, you know, when you have a bit of an off quarter like we did tonight, um, it certainly can, uh, can hurt you on the scoreboard going the other way. We're obviously only three rounds in, but the last quarter of, in round one against the Blues and now tonight against St Kilda, it's been some pretty heavy scores against you. Are you concerned that that's that that could be a habit unfolding or is, are they just two different games and we shouldn't read too much into it? Well, I'd like to say don't read too much into it, but as you said, it has happened. So we'll we'll go to work and 
Yeah, no, uh, Carlton quarter four was you know contested ball and fundamentals, and, and tonight was probably the same. So we'll look at those contests, and funnily enough, there were stages where we actually had an out outnumber around that contest, um, but just couldn't win it. They were cleaner, they were tougher, and got the ball forward. So, um, so there's some things we have to do better in that one. Just, just on on Jack Higgins, I know he obviously doesn't play for the club anymore, but he's, he seems like he's had a suspected concussion and he's had some brain surgery. So how? How much do you feel for him, I guess, and the amount of stuff he's had to go through in his career, even though he's he has some good moments, but it just seems like he can't get a clean run of it. Yeah, well, I think he was good. You know, he's been one of their best players, I think, in the first two rounds. And look, I didn't know what he went off with tonight, obviously, and we hope he's okay. And you know, it's part and parcel of the game, unfortunately, concussions. But um, look, the, what I will say is, footy clubs have got the medical, best medical stands, uh, staff in the land, so he'll be in good hands, and I'm sure he'll be back, hopefully, uh, whether it's next week or the week after. But yeah, we wish him well. Sydney Stackton playing the VFL today. Is, is there an issue there? Uh, close contact. Okay. So, yeah. If we could just get rid of the close contact rule, Dan, <laughs> that would be terrific. Make everyone's life a I'm hell of a lot easier. Yeah. Jack Revolt back next week. He's obviously pretty close. Yeah. Look, he put his hand up to play. You know, it's a special game for him. And at the end of the day, I just didn't think he was right, so I gave him another week and. He wasn't happy to, to be fair, but that's the sort of guy he is. He's incredibly combative. Uh, sorry, competitive, and he could have been missing two fingers. He still would his head, put his hand up to play. You know, he's a warrior for us, and you know he's disappointed. But um, look, he'll come into the side next week. And stick with the three talls up forward. If Jack comes in, see Walter and. and oh, look, it's something well. we'll look at. Um, you know, once again, there's various stages where the talls look really good, but he's five too many. We're not too sure, so we'll um, we'll go through it and find out what works for us, have a look at the opposition, see what presents there and, and work our way through it in uh, selection. You know, we've got six days to to come up against a, you know, a good Bulldogs outfit that was uh, was pretty good the other night. Did Matt Parker sort of set the game alight in the first half, obviously quiet, and, but what do you think of him as a bit of a bit of an option? He really put his hand up. Yeah, he's good, Parks. You know, he wins the ball and he's quite dynamic. Um, he's hard to play on too because he's, he's quite capable at ground level but also quite explosive in the air. So. He's playing some really good footy. Um, there's some things that he does very well. There's also some area of his game, like most players, that we'd like to get better. But he's continually working on those. So I thought he was, uh, you know, he's a pretty good contributor again tonight. Uh, had a good game last week as well, and we like what he brings. No, you're mindful of not providing a complete running commentary on Dustin. But is there any update you can provide? No, so? nothing at this stage. Like I said previously, um, it's the same. Yeah.